are you inspecting or providing or working in or commissioning a service that you would be happy for anybody that you love and care for to use? I call it the mum test and I, I kind of um, used the mum test in the very first document that I wrote um, when I got into post last year and so I wrote um, in the foreword um, to that document that this is what I wanted my inspectors to be doing when they went out and looked at services and the power of that you know translating the the kind of nuts and bolts of regulation into the mum test I have to confess that I have been utterly surprised by. It's not meant to be taken literally, it is supposed to be about the person that you love and care for, but it includes ourselves, it includes um, our, our children who may be using services. What um, we're trying to do at CQC is to be clear that the data is important, but we cannot ever all rely on the numbers. We have to listen to the voice of the people. We need to be using information in a way that is um, credible and robust um, and helps us with the judgments that we're making, but also helps those of you who are delivering and commissioning services and people who are using services to understand what it is that we're trying to achieve and how we're doing that. So we call it intelligent monitoring. Um, and, and that intelligent monitoring is about looking at the signs and symptoms that the data gives us um, about what's happening in services so that we can direct and focus our attention in the right places when we do inspections. No one um, uh, set of figures will tell you the truth. It'll give you an indication, it'll point you in the right direction, but you have to actually see these things uh, in the round. And listening to people's um, experiences of care is absolutely critical to what we do. And it's important for us to hear the positive as well as the negative, um, because one of the things that we do need to be doing um, is actually identifying what good looks like and how people can learn from that, as well as um, learning from uh, the mistakes that do um, sadly happen. So the sorts of things that we also do in terms of um, capturing individual experience um, is the listening events that are held before the announced inspections in the hospital um, uh, inspection regime. Um, in adult social care, we do unannounced inspections, so we don't have listening events in quite the same way. But what we will do is speak to the people who are using services and their families uh, and carers, as well as uh, uh, other people visiting services um, when we're there. Um, and we do questionnaires with people who are using services um, uh, out, out in the community. We will also observe there are people who cannot share their experience with us um, uh, because they have um, communication difficulties of whatever sort. And so observation of, uh, of what's happening is a critical tool that we've got. Um, and we will also be looking at complaints. We'll be looking not just at what the story of the complaint is, but also how that complaint um, was responded to and how um, people were treated, both staff but also absolutely critically um, uh, the family um, who have been raising concerns. Behind every number is a human story. A couple of weeks ago we published um uh, a, a thematic review called Cracks in the Pathway about the care of people living with dementia as they move from care homes uh, to um, hospitals and back to care homes. And there's a lot of data um, in that, in, in, in that um, report um, identifying that of the various different aspects of people's journey through services, um, you know, there is a huge amount of variable and poor care. And it's all well and good giving you that statistical data. We do know that we fail people who are living with dementia and we need to do better. Um, but actually, it's the people that are affected, directly affected by that. And this is one lady who is living with dementia, Anne Johnson. She is absolutely fantastic. Um, she was diagnosed at the age of 51 um, and is now in her early 60s. And she's keeping herself going um, by her friends, her faith, and the fact that she goes ar around talking about dementia and talking about what it's like to be somebody who is living with dementia. Um, I have heard her 
had, had the privilege of hearing her speak um, three times now, um, and it's incredibly powerful because she's absolutely able to take all of those stats and figures, all of the things that we know, and then translate it into her real lived experience. And one of the things that, that she says is, if you've met one person with dementia, you've met one person with dementia. You, you need to actually think about the fact that people who are using services um, uh, have their own individual needs, their own individual experiences, and we need to be responsive to that. Um, and what she also says is, love me for who I am. Um, and I think that that's one of the reasons why it is so important for us to remember and to listen to the human stories that exist behind the numbers that we all trot out and in, in conferences like this. Thank you very much.